is your host, Shida Ekstrom, and you are tuning in to Grit and Grace. Real people, real conversations, and real grit. Success and possibly a new reality show. This is Shiloh Ekstrom, and you're watching and listening to Grit and Grace. Oh my gosh, I am excited today. We are going to have an incredible episode. I have my friend, entrepreneur, fellow colleague, absolute rock star, Ian Lenhart, with us. What is up? Also, fellow podcaster. Say hello to our listeners, Ian. I am excited for this one today. We're here, grit and grace, baby. Shiloh, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so proud of you. What an amazing platform you've built and this amazing audience. I, I, you should have done this a decade ago because you're just such a natural at this and I'm really grateful to be here. Oh my gosh. Well, it's exciting. And remember last year at this time, you were teaching me how to do a podcast. <laughs> it's so incredible. And we're going to talk all about Ian and his podcast and what he does and all the things in a little bit. I'm going to let him share. But last year at this time, let's just go back. I was in such a kind of a whirlwind. You know, we just got it. What, what month is it now? It was April. So it was about this time. Everyone was on quarantine lockdown. We were trying to, you know, do this podcast in a tutorial. It was incredible. Um, you had set up an incredible program. We were going through that. And it was like all the things were happening and kind of spiraling. I just was, I was in this world where I'm like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. So I put the halt on it. That's okay. But we've known each other now for three years. We are colleagues in a company together and absolutely fell in love with each other. I think right from the get-go, the minute I met you at the bar, we were at the bar. I was like, this dude is cool. And my girlfriend, Robin, who was with me, absolutely fell in love with you too. So it was so much fun. Um, but we became instant friends and it's been incredible. So for our listeners, before we go into any of the fun stuff, cause we're going to talk all about it today, aliens, all the things, um, tell, tell everyone kind of, you got started as an entrepreneur very young and, kind of interesting, a very interesting company that I used to follow and the company actually shut down, but I'm going to let you talk about that. So how the heck did you get in the world? Number one, of being an entrepreneur, number two, podcasting, because you have an incredible podcast that I want to talk about. Um, kind of go into that first and we'll kind of go back and forth because I really want to hear some of that startup story. Yeah. Uh, this is great. This is going to be so much fun. So, I mean, I got bit by the entrepreneurial bug and I'm very grateful because I was just having a conversation over some cigars the other night with one of my good friends. He's a UFC sports agent. And I was talking to him like, what a random and weird career path to choose. You're a sports agent for the UFC. How often do you hear something like that? It's, it's just like a rare type of niche that you carved out. And he talked about how he got into entrepreneurship when he was young, just by slang and cotton candy, you know, at like baseball stadiums and learning how he could make an extra dollar here and there. I got started in direct, in direct sales when I was 20 years old, because someone texted me saying, I have something you'd be dank at. Now, direct sales, AKA network marketing has a bad rep in, in the world because it's a un, you know, it's, it's chaos. You know, essentially you recommend things to word of mouth advertising. There's no very minimal training. People are excited. They don't know what they're talking about and what they blabber out becomes craziness. But on the flip side, that world teaches you and trains your brain into realizing that there's alternative ways to make money. There's alternative ways to build a career. And I think that that opens the path, like the neuro pathways in your brain to realize you don't have to technically just work for a specific career for the rest of your life for 30 years. And you know what was trained and programmed into our sheep like mentality. I think we all just are naturally inclined to choose something that has for sure, you know, some sort of a level of stability. And when you get bit by that entrepreneurial bug and you meet someone who 
is just not that, you know, better than you, not better, more better looking than you, more talented than you, better speaker than you. And they're making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month, a year. You realize like, yo, I could do this too. So the short story is I got in network marketing. It took off, you know, I was the right place, right time. I was nervous as hell, but excited. And I met these amazing people all around the world that today has developed this insane entrepreneurial network. So I'll stop there, but that was the intro. I think that's important because obviously that platform got me to where I am. So I think I was talking about the reality show, right? I, I, I want to pitch this to Andy Cohen. I want to be like, or Candace, who owns this media company, like, listen, there's something here with the reality show. The Real Housewives of Network Marketing would be wild. Because here's the thing, you know, we both come from fun companies before. I'm not saying we're not in a fun company now, but real fun. <laughs> like, there was lots of excitement. So what happens in network marketing and why it gets a bad name is because you always have characters that are characters. You know, there are entrepreneurs, they're making money. Some of these people are making money at 19, 20, money that you can't even imagine, right? So network marketing, it creates incredible, incredible people. It creates opportunities, but it also accentuates some behaviors that may not be awesome. And when you, when you have a young group of people or young people who are just excited, that's when the cars come in and the houses come in and you got the $90,000 watches. And I think it puts a bad taste in people, people who have never even experienced network marketing or they've never had success. So they're like, well, screw that. That's BS. I couldn't do it. And, and you know what? I get that. And it's something that I've been very careful with in my career in the last, I'd say five years on the back end of, because I identify, hey, yes, we want people to be able to do that. You can, the sky's the limit in network marketing. That's what's the biggest blessing. But it's really about the everyday people who can come in and make 500 to $1,000. So I think that's really important to talk about. But we both got excited about the big opportunity, right? And, and you were a part of a very fun culture. We were not in the same company when you first got started. I was in a separate company, but very similar cultures. And so, and I knew a lot of those people. I was friends with many of those people. And so you got started, you saw that success. Let's go into that because, you know, I, I kind of put the platform down like, Hey, we know not everyone loves network marketing, but it is a great opportunity. What happened to get you to where you are now? What went on in that like really big excitement, bought the cars and what? Yeah, it, it was amazing. The experience was incredible. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I literally created this fraternity of business friends that has, again, just transformed my life today. But like you said, I had the success. I followed the game plan. Next thing you know, I had 42 people on my, my team, right? That had paid for BMWs or Mercedes, which really they're just paying the lease, right? right. And, and so if you go back in your numbers, homie, girl, you got, a, you got a payment to make. Like they don't tell you that, right? But it was exciting. People were believing and they were excited and more excited than they've ever been in their life. Obviously, that's terrible if they're getting excited about something that doesn't exist, like a legitimate pyramid scheme, which the company I was with was legitimately accused of being a pyramid scheme, which is a gnarly experience, especially when you hear the story from the founder and CEO, BK Bareko, of uh, the company I was with. I just want to say it's called Vima. It was an incredible story um, about how the FTC had these allegations. Um, he went from a $228 million company to a negative $7 million company in two days based on these allegations eventually settled for a very, very minimal amount. So it was really written off as a giant win. But overall, that whole experience was crazy. And when I went from having you know, a sizable income, took a year off of school, traveling all around the world, and then gone to nothing, I didn't save any money. I just thought it would keep coming in. Yeah, I, you just don't know. Um, so I'm 21 years old, I'm back on my butt. And uh, I decided maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I need to get into the tech world. So alongside doing direct sales, I was making very little money. I just continued to do it part-time. I got involved in the tech world. And I knew that the only way to get like truly wealthy in this world is to either start or own your own company or to own equity in someone else's company. So I thought, okay, I need to get my foot in the door. I reached out to about 200 different tech companies that I thought were sounded really cool. 
I went on LinkedIn. I used the extension hunter.io or contact out to find the email addresses of founders. And then I would shoot them an email saying, Hey, my name is Ian Lenhart. I am 21 years old. I did started this business in college. I'm very ambitious. I'll work for free. I just want to be early on in the company. Eventually got responses from about five companies, narrowed it down to one, which was a facial recognition doorbell, worked for free for over a year and a half with these guys, eventually became the first employee, got into a startup accelerator called 500 Startups, which is a top three accelerator in San Francisco at the time. Eventually we transformed into TrueFace, a facial recognition provider, and that expanded into a team of about 20 people in infinity and beyond. And today I actually work with the data company. Um, where we sell data about physical spaces. And we're actually launching uh, a podcast soon, which no one even knows about this yet, um, which is really excited on behalf of the, you know, the data company I work with, which is the largest geospatial data provider in the US. So all of these things all started because I got into this whole little thing called direct sales. And I think my story is unique because I play both sides. You know, I play both sides, baby. I love direct sales, but I also love the traditional way of doing like a startup nine to five type of mentality. And I think people need to appreciate that more. You know what I mean? I, I absolutely do. And I think you did the right things. I mean, when you're 20 years old, 21 years old, and you have this huge success right away, I couldn't imagine if I was 20 years old, 20 and 21, having that type of success, I would have done the same thing. I wouldn't have saved my money. I would have been like, let's go, let's go travel the world, baby. Like I would have been so pumped up. But what's fun about you is you're kind of, you have this multi-dimensional business and you are, you're young. I would say you're still very young and you just have a way about you that attracts people like me and successful business people and we want to know more about you. You're going places. I mean, the reason I asked you on here, not only because you're my friend, you've helped me in the past, but also I want to show the world who you are because it's like, this is a guy who is going big, like big. And when you were talking about the tech industry, I'm like, you know, what's so funny about that. I didn't even know that about you. And I know a lot about you. Like, I'm like, here's this other part of Ian that everybody needs to know. So I'm glad we get to highlight that. All right, let's talk about some regular stuff. I was, I was listening to another podcast. Obviously I love Joe Rogan. I'm sure you do too. I mean, he's I listen, amazing. yeah, he's just cool. I mean, he just talks and it's, it's, that's what it's about. And I was listening to some success on um, his, and you know what I wanted to ask you, because I've been thinking a lot about this. I was this morning thinking about my own business and the, the ups and the downs of success. I mean, obviously you watched a business go away in a day you know, you can go, whoosh, I mean, it happens. It, anything can happen. The world can change. We saw it last year. The whole world was flipped upside down. We were fortunate enough to be in a business that it, it grew. You know, it actually grew, you know, direct sales went skyrocketing in many, many areas. Ours really did because we're an online model. But when it comes to success, I was going to ask you, what do you think the formula is? Because I, I think consistency, this is my personal opinion and many, I think it's consistency. I honestly think you need to show up, like show the freak up, even when it's crappy, even when it sucks, when you feel bad. Um, I posted something today about, you know, chronic pain. I deal with chronic pain sometimes and I forget about it until it shows up, but it's like, I still have to go. I still have to show up on those days. And so what do you think being such a young, successful entrepreneur, the keys to your success have been? Dang, what a great question. There's so much good stuff to talk about there. First off, I love the quote um, by Naval, uh, the CEO of Angelus, who says that you have to, everyone needs to get rich. And his reasoning is that you have to get rich before you realize it's not the answer, right? But you can't tell that to someone who isn't rich. It's just how the world works. Mm -hmm. So realistically, if you can go and buy a house, which most people can, most people can apply for a mortgage with just a general job, and you can get a car and you can get clothes, you have everything you need to be like genuinely really, really happy. Like you can be balling out in your life at a, at a hundred K a year salary, right? Like you can have everything you want. Everything else is just going to be fun extras. So when it comes to just like monetary success, for me, that doesn't really motivate me. For me, it's just getting into someone else's world. Like I love Joe Rogan because he's so curious about everyone else. 
he's so interested. He says that he wish he could live a multidimensional world where he could walk in like five different people's shoes. I feel very similar to that, which is, I think, what is a great trait in podcasters, because we want to understand why other people do what they do. Why did you decide to jump into this business and go all in on this or move to Nicaragua and start a sailing company or move to South America and raise cheetahs in South Africa? Why did you do this? We live this one little lifestyle in one lifetime and some people are living it way different than others. So the key to my success is curiosity and genuine. I like to think that I'm pretty genuine when it comes to my intentions. For example, I started podcasting and everyone listening to this should take some notes here because I think that you'd be absolutely insane not to start a podcast today. And let me tell you why. I started a podcast because I was a little bit lost in two functions. If you want to be a badass marketer, you got to kind of like find a niche and you got to like dive into that niche and then you got to get the thousand true fans and then you can build those thousand true fans and you can be a multimillionaire crushing it. No one might ever know your name, but amongst those thousand true fans, you are God, you're freaking Bruce Bain, you're Batman, you're crushing it. But I didn't know what my niche was. So I used the podcast as a method to reach out to all of the top performers inside of all of the potential niches that I was interested in right? Amazon drop shipping, um, understanding flipping rental properties, understanding building startups, understanding building manufacturing companies, conservation, cheetahs. You know, we had this girl who raises cheetahs. It's just, it's so sick. And then the other thing selfishly is I just wanted to network and meet good people. When you know good people, good things happen. What's better when you're sitting around a table and, you know, maybe you're having a drink, a cigar or just some water and you're having a good time with a good freaking friend and you're just vibing, right? That is the ultimate feeling. So I was looking to upgrade my network and explore niches. By starting a podcast, you force yourself to reach out to incredible individuals and share them on a platform, which really is like an hour long time to gain mentorship about a subject. What happens is you end up becoming good friends in many situations with those people. And you get inspired by those people because their energy is contagious. They got to where they're at because they are somebody that's unique. If you do that consistently, week after week after week, you will eventually have the biggest network, the biggest passions. You will have excitement for the world. But the only way to do it is that word that you just said, consistency. If you're not consistent, you lose. We both have a friend named Tanya Eliza. I I like to say Tanya Eliza, she's great at what she does, but she's not exceptional. She's not the greatest speaker in the world. She's not like this, you know, like born. She's just a hard worker and she's consistent and she's built a multi-million dollar business being consistent for five years. So if you can be consistent on anything, which is so hard in a squirrel economy that we're in, right? We both know like when you're doing a bunch of stuff, it's hard to be consistent, especially when you throw in health issues, which I know both of us have had quite some health issues uh, to say the least. And I'm happy to talk about that if you'd like. Yeah, to. We, can. we can talk about a lot of things. So it, it's interesting because this kind of brings me into a, a different space that we might not have originally going to go to, but a lot of people come into business and they're like, how do I, you know, you, you talked about having those thousand people. Well, you know, it's funny for the first seven years, I wasn't thinking that way. I was just like doing it. Like for me, I was, I was back against the wall. So I came into this industry, not as young as you, I was younger, but I was, I was in, I was a dental hygienist. I was a mom. I was like navigating all these things and the rug got pulled out because the economy tanked. And I'm like, holy crap, what am I going to do? Because I have to go to work, but I can't go to work. Like I'm already working. How the hell do I, how the hell do I make more money and help our family? So network marketing was the natural I was scared of speaking. I was like, I think about all the things that no longer exist because of this platform and what we've done personally and developed ourselves. But when people are talking about consistency and finding the niche and finding those people, when you show up and you just, you can be yourself, what would you tell someone? How do you just go out and be your damn self? Because what I found I'm good at, I'm not good at everything. I'm going to tell you that. Like, I love that you brought Tanya or Tanya up because here's the thing. I've realized this. I'm like, I'm not the best speaker. I'm not the best at certain things, but I'm really good at talking to people. I'm really good at connecting people. And that's my gift. And so podcasting was natural to me because I'm like, this is my passion. This is what I do. I love being on the phone and I love talking to people one-on-one. 
the hardest part about social media, I love it, but you do miss some of that connection. There's a connection loss that when, when I came into a full all online business three years ago, I'm like, Oh, I'm not as, I'm not as connected as I was. That's not bad. That doesn't mean I'm not doing my job. It just means I've had to shift the way I do things. And I really, I still love the phone. Like if you get on the phone with me, we could talk for hours. I love chatting on the phone. You're a fun I, talker. <laughs> I like to talk. We have fun. We'll go all over. But it's it's like that's the connecting piece that I was missing and why I chose this passion project of podcasting because I get to see somebody. I get to hear from somebody and do that. So being your authentic self is something that I kind of caught out of that because that is something I was challenged with so long. I was doing it wrong. I was trying to please everybody. You're never going to do that. I was trying to be everyone's hero. You're never going to be that. I mean, we think about social media, uh, Rachel Hollis, let's just bring it up. People were all in a tiffy because Rachel Hollis was a little arrogant. She was, I watched it. She made some comments and it got, it, it was a little bit touchy. We're in a touchy time. And when I watched it, I was like, here's the deal. It was arrogant. Am I mad? No, I don't care what Rachel Hollis does, but I understand why people get so uptight about it. But how do you be your authentic self when you have so many critics watching, listening? How do you keep going? First off, drama sells, and I'm not good at drama, but I sometimes wish I was, but drama <laughs> sells. All of y'all, everyone wants the tea. Everyone loves a little spice in their life. Mm -hmm. A little boringness doesn't get you anywhere. If you know what you're expecting, you want something new, right? So a little bit of spice ain't bad, but sometimes it can land you in trouble. But a couple of things. One thing I, I mentioned Tanya before, I learned how to build a business because I took one of her courses. And I used her as an example because I just realized if she can do it, I can do it too. I just wanted to clarify that before. Mm -hmm. And the connection component, you know, we're people, we're just all a bunch of idiots deep inside where some of us are really good at some things, but we typically suck at everything else. We might be really good at making money, but we're terrible at like running a household or we're great at this, but we're bad at this. No one's perfect at everything. So when you become, you know, you try to put yourself into this perfect box. You just fail miserably. It's people that can relate so well and just be authentic with other people that other people just vibe with. They're like, oh, this is a normal human that goes to the bathroom too, you know, that wakes up looking like shit that has these bad days. You know, like my motto is it's a damn good day to have a damn good day. And I try to preach that every single day, but I have bad days, man, especially with health issues. I mean, even this morning I was having a, a rough day with just like my gut and it's a little, you can hear it in my voice just a little bit, not enough to not make me podcast, but you know, you wake up some days and you have bad days. Being authentic and being able to share that with people is huge. Being able to open up and be vulnerable. That's what's going to get people to trust you. If people trust you, they help you. If people like trust and respect you, they'll do business with you. And then all of a sudden you built an empire over long periods of time. The more quality individuals you can get, the bigger your quote unquote empire becomes. So I think that it's tough, especially when you're dealing in this industry of like, let's go back to that statement about women man, like I work in a company that's like 99% women, right? And like, that's the reality. Um, and yeah, you, know, you gotta, you gotta be careful with everything you do, because like, if you get one like brawl inside of a bunch of, it can erupt, right? Because everyone's searching for drama. They want it, they crave it, but you gotta keep it away. Like a second you see some drama coming, you gotta kick it out quick. Cause it's like a cancer, it develops. And then that, you know, ego gets in the way and people will get vicious and then it gets ugly and then these friendships are severed and then all of a sudden people hate the, the business and the industry. I think that's a big reason why we initially joined the company we're with right now and the leaders we're with right now because they do such a good job at recognizing these things and squashing it early to making sure that you're always going to have trouble. You're always going to have trouble, like problems. And people forget that. Like you run a home-based business. You run a business. What do you expect? You are the fire man. You are the garbage man. As a CEO of a startup, literally you just put out fires all day. It's stressful. It's scary. You have to pay employees. It's hard. Direct sales, guess what? It is hard too. 
But at the end of the day, you're going to have to pick your hard unless you want to take orders. So there's no perfect path, but if you can find some really good people to do the thing with, to laugh with, to have some chocolate with and giggle with, then damn girl, you crushed it, right? Find those good people and just appreciate them. If you appreciate them and work with them and work hard over long periods of time, good things happen. Would you agree? I think so. I agree hundred percent. I think one of the other reasons is people will come into a business for money versus the culture. And it's the other way around. You will make money if the culture is right. I learned that because when you talk about the drama, do you have leaders that ignite the fires or do they put them out? Do you have leaders that divide the other leaders or do they bring them together and handle it? It's really important because no matter where you go, there's going to, there's humans. It's going to be the same. There's egos, there's humans, there's people all wanting to be at the top, but how the leadership, the culture, the business handles itself is really, really important. So I watch a lot of people make decisions for money only, and I see the same people going to company to company. This is interesting too, you do. And then what happens is they tend to burn bridges on their way out. Now I've left companies, I get it. I have burned bridges, not necessarily um, intentionally tried to do that, but it happened. Um, what I see though, is this is this pattern with the same people because the, the, the motivation is only money. And so they think, well, I'm going to go make quick money, but what you're not seeing is the long term. This has been brought up a couple of times in my own personal chats and things with other leaders are like, you know, this is interesting. What do you think, you know, when you talk about culture, they say culture eats everything for breakfast. And yeah. it's so true. So when you pick a company and you pick a path, when you can let money go, you'll make more money. It's so interesting how that works. And I noticed that the less my ego gets involved in what I do now, the more success I see. And the less I'm in the forefront. And it's really interesting because five years ago, I thought it was, you have to be in the front. You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. And I got told straight to my face, like, you'll never be the top leader because you said, I said something. And it wasn't in my opinion, terrible, but this is from a CEO. And I was like, I, I was crushed. Mm -hmm. And I had to think about that. It took me a while, but I'm like, you know what? That's true. I don't have to be the one rah rah all the time, like standing in the front, being on stage all the time. It's not about that. It's the stuff we do in the quiet that defines who we are, seriously. And I've I, and sometimes it's a challenge because we all have egos, right? So I really truly think that the Real Housewives of Network Marketing would work. Well, everyone loves our old companies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone loves a comeback story. So no matter what, so no matter how bad you f up in this world, like you can come back. I mean, think about all the crazy stuff you see in the news every day. No one really cares a week later because there's something crazier that happens because we as humans are just natural drama creators. Uh, the question is, is what are you going to do after this? Because you can turn your huge fail into a giant success. I know personally, the two of us have spoken. You've had an amazing transformation, Shiloh, right? Like you went to a place where you hit like a really big rock bottom point in your life and you were, and you had to like redefine who you really were and you emerged like a straight Phoenix, you know, like you came out the other end. So just passionate and excited. And like, you weren't like this when I first met you, like you're so invigorated and excited about your purpose and the people, but you had to go through a lot of ups and downs, um, inflicted and non-inflicted that made you who you are today. But like the comeback story is awesome. If you can do the comeback story, people almost respect you more because you're more human. And that's why I tend to like the philosophy in general, just go, 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 do, 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 do less study, less marketing attempt. Although you are going, it's like car crash. It's just going to like crack your car the entire way forward. I think you've been a great example of, of being able to do that, but now you're driving in, in that fast lane and you're helping a lot of people and it, you're a huge inspiration. Well, I appreciate your words. And I do call myself the comeback queen because I feel like I've, I've fallen so many times and that's kind of my pitch now. I'm like, I failed a million times so you don't have to fail as much as I did. <laughs> like, but that's part of the success. You have to fail. I think more people are just afraid to freaking fail. It's like fall on your face. It's okay it'll be okay. Like you can get back up like that. That's what we're here to show people though. And I think that's why we do love, we love the underdogs. We love the comeback stories. Cause we're like, that's what I want to be. Cause we're all secretly trying. We're all secretly like, Oh, I screwed up here. And I, 
I could have done this better. Of course you could have, who cares? Learn, keep going. Like one of the only things that has gotten me through a challenging time of this last, I would say six months, I've gone through some private challenging times again, but that's okay, um, was being active every day. Like every day I got up and said, okay, I'm gonna take an action today. Even if it's small, at least I'm taking an action. Y'all, that's honestly, we talked about consistency, that's it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to go do massive things. It means every single day, if it's getting out of bed, good. If that's what it took that day, it's okay. So let's talk about chronic pain. You've brought it up a few times. You've brought up health issues. Let's mm -hmm. talk about it. Cause I actually just posted about mine because I was thinking like, here, I'll show you on my back. I have a pain patch on my back. And so it's, I have a mother who had chronic pain from, since I was like nine or 10 and she still deals with it. And it, it bothers me to complain because I, I feel like, cause she had so much and I was always, I always was frustrated with her. I got mad at her that I don't want to ever say that. And I'm not mad at her now. It's just the norm. She's always in pain and we know that. And she is in pain, but for me, I have an autoimmune that, that causes every now and then serious pain. And I feel embarrassed. And I'm like, I, I cried yesterday because I was just in constant pain and it wasn't terrible. I've been working out, prepping for a photo shoot. Long story short, when I work out and I do any upper body, it causes major problems. And then it can lead to migraines and then it can lead to no sleep, blah, 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 blah. But I've, I've had a lot of issues health-wise that my lifestyle completely changed. So how I got very into health and fitness, more plant-based, more everything was because I needed to, I needed it for my health or I wasn't going to get by. Yeah. So I know you've had some serious health struggles. And for me, I take actions every day and I do a lot of things to get by, but let's talk about what's going on with you a little bit and, and how you've gotten through it because you had a really challenging year. I, I was or two years. Yeah. It sucks to hear about your autoimmune stuff. I mean, there's so many people with autoimmune stuff today. And there's so much people in chronic pain today that just don't talk about it because like, I don't talk about my chronic pain. I'll be honest. Like I should, but I just don't. I tend to talk about it after I've gotten over it. Cause it's like one of those Epic stories, but you just don't talk about it. Like, why would you talk about it? I don't want to sit there and complain. Like, I'm just not that type of person. I don't want to, not because like, I'm like those, I, I'm like you said, I'm a bit embarrassed by it. It's not sexy. Like, yeah. Hey, look, like, my vision is like potentially permanently screwed up for the rest of my life because I made a terrible decision. Like, why do I want to tell people that? Like, right. you know, so I, I think for everyone listening, if you have chronic pain, like you're not alone, you know, you're not alone. Um, so my story, I, I've had just a bunch, it was just a shit show of things that happened at once. So I had gut issues for a while and I never really knew what the gut issues were. And uh, I started with just IBS ended up getting the colonoscopy, the endoscopy, all the different shots, every single test you can think of, gallbladder, gallbladder x-rays was a hair away from getting my gallbladder removed, which a lot of people get their gallbladders removed when they did not need to. Um, so be careful before you get your gallbladder removed. But basically, eventually long term, I've, I've learned I had something called SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And it's like a chronic condition. We're learning more and more about the gut every single day. Um, if you want to talk about gut health, we can go forever because uh, number one, if you want to be like beat your chronic illness, the best way to do it is to empower yourself. But let's let's get out of that. So I've had this ongoing gut health for a while and it kind of had a steamroll effect. So uh, I didn't know what it was for years and it just caused me to be depressed, sad. I had really bad, you know, motility and bowel movements. I'd get super constipated. And what happens is, is when you're consuming food and you're not being regular, like going to the bathroom, right? Um, what happens is, is those the food gets developed and stored in the 20 feet of intestines. And if it's not getting like pushed out, it starts to rot inside of your stomach. This is happening to many people all around the world, probably about 20% of the population. And what happens is, is when it rots, you get toxins that leak, right? You hear leaky gut or intestinal permeability leaks into the blood system, which then triggers all sorts of shit. Hashimoto's, um, autoimmune. So we're learning more and more that diet and all these things affect the gut. So I didn't know all this though. I learned, I know about it sort of now, but at that time I was having that issue, which by itself was just a beast. I started having um, really, really, really bad pain in my leg. 
and I had something called sciatica. And if you guys know about sciatica, you have a sciatic nerve that runs down from the top of your spine all the way down to your foot. And some people, what happens is, is the most typical example is that when you have a bulging disc, the bulging disc touches the sciatic nerve, triggering really, really bad pain. I mean, it's like the top 20 worst pains you can feel. Um, I had it for over a year and a half and they couldn't figure out what it was. I had seven MRIs. I went through spinal decompression. I went through three epidural shots. I was a hair away from doing the surgery. It was just a nightmare pain management, gabapentin, like doing all those little drugs to try to get over it. This was happening with the SIBO. And then I made the decision, which I was really uncomfortable talking about this because I was so embarrassed for so long. I got LASIK eye surgery, which my whole life, I was just always a little bit blind. And for me, whenever I do something and it seems like an obvious decision, I tend to pull the trigger. That's how it got me to where I'm at today. I asked everyone I have ever known that's gotten LASIK eye surgery and every single one of them said it was the best decision they've ever made. So I got LASIK eye surgery from the best surgeon and the whole thing. And what happened is my corneal nerves never regenerated. So I went through about a year and a half where my eyes were just burning. And it hurts so much. I have permanent halos every single night before I go to bed at, just at night for the rest of my life. That's, that's permanent. But my eyes were burning. And the doctors, one doctor said I had cataracts, like WTF. Another doctor said I had dry eye. They had no idea. Eventually, I found out from these amazing doctors at Tufts Medical School in Boston after just trying that I had this thing called, um, um, basically, my nerves didn't regenerate. And I had inflammation in the eye. So then I was on 12, shot, 12 eye drops a day where they were taking blood out of my body and creating serum tears out of it. So I don't want to talk too much into this because I, I, I tend to talk about it too much, but that was one issue. Eventually they found I had a tumor in my leg, which was non-cancerous, but that's what caused my sciatic nerve. It was on and around the sciatic nerve. So tumors removed, eyes are back, guts all right. And I'm out here saying it's a damn good day to have a damn good day. But the point is, is that the number one thing I have to tell you guys, if you're going through pain is have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you feel lost, you feel stuck. And that's the root of anxiety. Make a new health plan and keep trying to become the boss. Don't assume a doctor is going to tell you what's up because they probably don't know. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. And I've had, I've had some interesting things. I was talking to someone and I was explaining, I had to have a surgery. It was minor, but I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's me. Like something always goes wrong. Like I'm the one person that it doesn't work out on, you know? And so it, it can be very frustrating when you have medical issues. I think the big thing though, is people don't want to complain. They think if they complain that they're bothering people, because I know that's how I feel. I'm like, oh, I don't want to come off as a negative person. We come from that world. We're like, we're positive and we got to be positive and look at the bright side. But at the same time, it's like you, you mentioned, it's like, you don't want to say you have chronic pain, like, oh, look at me. Who wants to date a person who's in pain all the time or who, you know what I mean? We think not sexy, yeah. not sexy. Like we're like, but here's the reality. It happens and everybody is going to go through something and it's okay to talk about. So I think the first thing is it's okay to say you're in pain. Number one, number two, ask for help because there are a lot of people that are ready to help you. I mean, if I posted right now, and I'm sure I've got people already on my post, they will want to help you. And yeah, some of it's not necessarily the best things, but it's okay. You have people that will support and help you. So don't be afraid to do that. Don't stay in the dark. I think that's the most important thing. And, and, and honestly, find support. Find people who will sit down with you when you're having those days and it's okay to have yeah. days. because, and like you said, you know, it, it, it's interesting because you going through some of your stuff. I mean, you could call me at any time and say something and I would listen to you. And I think that's important to know as friends, you do have those friends and that's great. Okay. So the world is crazy. The Let's world is crazy. The world is People absolutely crazy. Stop trying, to, stop trying to make sense of it. No. Yeah. So I always, I kind of laugh about it. Like I don't get, and I've been a person who's socially effed up. Like I've made a public asshole of myself more than once. And I do understand it. So, you know, we see these, okay, we're in cancel culture. I brought it up a couple of times on my show, but we're in this cancel culture in crazy times and we're trying to build businesses and we're trying not to step on toes, but we're fricking stepping on toes. And, you know, we see all these things. Let's just talk pop culture real quick. The Harry and Meghan thing. 
how ridiculous has this gotten? I mean, we're watching people get fired from their jobs because they have an opinion about it. It's absolutely ridiculous. You can have an opinion. It's okay. We don't have to agree. But then, you know, I wonder now, now his grandfather dies, which is sad. He was an incredible man, actually, with his death. Obviously, we always make heroes of everybody. You actually realize this man had a lot of things similar to you. Let's talk about this. So we're kind of all over here. He was a big environmentalist. A lot of people didn't know. And he was an environmentalist before it was cool. Way back before people were talking about the planet. He was very passionate about it. And I know you are. So let's talk about your passions and the environment and what you're doing. That was great. You're so good at just interviewing and talking. Like, way to go. <laughs> you want to segue into that? That was, that was a great segue. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I I actually didn't listen to the Harry interview, so I have no idea. Well, I didn't um, listen to it. I don't have time for that. But I do. Right. It just was so crazy. The whole thing was crazy. Yeah, I mean, first off, like the cancel culture thing. I, I'm kind of. I'm. I'm a little weak. I'm not the best resource to talk about this because I honestly just stay away from all of it. Like I just, and I don't think that's the right mentality. I think you should have opinions about things, and that's like good. You, everyone needs to have their own opinion, and if you don't have your own opinion, you really haven't thought something through enough. Yeah. Um, which is an example. So. If you put your opinion out there, though, people are going to attack you. And that's how the internet works because people find strength in numbers. And there's a psychological component of it, of people that attack people and want to be a part of a, a clan and a gang. And you got to be careful about what you say or do and put on the internet. But no matter what, if you do get big, you're going to screw up. You're going to say stuff you didn't say. And um, hopefully <laughs> it's not as bad, but we all know people that have said terrible things and they come back stronger than ever. But environmentalist, listen, I am a kind of a fake environmentalist. I can't say like I'm this amazing, you know, um, conservationist and I live my day. I don't use plastic or any of that stuff, but I love coral reefs and scuba diving. There's nothing more beautiful in this world than a living coral reef. It is unbelievable. I used to own a fish tank cleaning business when I was in high school where I would oh, clean cool. people's coral reef tanks and set them up. And if you get into the coral reef hobby, you build an ecosystem with live rock and all these different invertebrates. And it's so fun. You, be, you play, you know, God mode and you get to create this tank. Um, but the, the, the reefs are dead and it's so terrible that we, our generation gets to live out the last of the, the dying reefs, but at the same time has a chance to change it. So I personally am passionate about putting people on that are making a difference and are changing the planet. And I feel that the biggest way to do it is through funding technology startups that are doing these things on aggregate at a massive scale. Like I have a friend, Daniela Fernandez of the Sustainable Ocean Alliance, SOA, she started a, um, uh, a fund that only invests in ocean-backed startups, started with uh, funding from one of these large VCs of like a million dollars. They funded five startups. Now they're funding like 30 startups and it's scaling from there and helping these companies remove plastic, convert solar energy to remove the garbage. So like there's so much infrastructure problems we have in our society today that are constantly changing. Like when we throw our garbage out, no one even knows where it goes. You know, most people don't recycle because a lot of even buildings don't even have right recycling policies. So there's a lot that can be done in our backyards. I think that it's crucial that we do stuff obviously because the world's dying and the world's so beautiful, right? So I get really annoyed with people that say climate change isn't real. I don't think anyone doesn't believe that anymore. The only people that do say it are ones that aren't gonna have to deal with it in their lifetime. I think everyone thinks it's real. I, I think it, it's, it's been, it, it, they know it's there. And it's sadly, when you look at politics, when you get into politics, it's who's paying who money to say what, that's where that goes. And when it, when it comes down to it, I think everybody is identifying it. Have you watched the documentary Seaspiracy yet? I just, your opinion, I don't care if it's good or bad. I don't know that one particular. It doesn't ring a bell. It's, it's new. Um, I suggest it. It's highly uh, educational. I think here's the deal with being a con in conservation, helping save the planet, helping anything. You yourself don't have to go out into the ocean to save the ocean. You need to bring awareness and you have a podcast. That's your gift. Your gift is to bring conservationists and people with ideas and talents and knowledge. Knowledge is power. So if we want to save the planet, which I feel we will, I think we will. We're getting to the Definitely. point where people, we're, we're at a breaking point. We're at a point where everyone's like, 
even people who don't care have to care because they won't be here in 20 years. Like we're getting to the breaking point of destroying the oceans where if the ocean dies, we die. And it's happening faster than bees. So bees are important. The oceans need to survive. We all have to have it. So being aware and having knowledge. And I think that's the key. And I think that's what your gift is, your gift to your connector like me. We may not be able to go do it. We might not be inventors. We might not be in the ocean every day, but we can find somebody. We can get connected to somebody who can do what we, what we need, right? The, the people that we need. So that's, that's where I think our talents lie. And I think it's okay. And so that's the other point I wanted to bring up with us and what this podcast is, is, is for in this episode is you don't have, like we talk about being your own superheroes all the time in here. You don't always have to wear the cape to be a superhero. You can do something small. You can change the world with just by sharing your story, okay? Your story might change one life. That one life might go on to change the world, right? It's all about connections. It's all about connections. So- yeah, the One thing I just wanna call out is before I did this podcast today, I was tired, feeling like ass, just did not really wanna do it, but I didn't wanna let Shiloh down. And I, wasn't feeling good either. I just was like, oh, like my voice sounds like I just, you know, like I have a sore throat. I'm like, y'all, well, I don't have COVID. I don't think so. Um, and it's just like, I didn't want to do it. But now after talking to you and talking and just getting out here and doing this thing, I am fired up right now. I am feeling good. Like I, when I get after this, I am getting after it the rest of the day. I'm like, yo, I am behind on my goals and my stuff. This is why you need to listen to podcasts, do a podcast, do something like this, because it gets you back into that mindset of go, 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 go right? You need to daily, daily infuse your brain with these good words that you can do it, that you can make a difference. And listening to you, I'm like so fired up now. My whole energy has changed by the end of this podcast from, from where it started. And I think that's just a really exciting topic. <laughs> it is fun. It's so fun. And, I th and that's why being connected, when we get separated and being in quarantine, it really did bring a lot of people down. And this was my outlet to get out because I started to notice I'm a hermit. So I like being alone, but I was way too alone. And I'm like, whoa, I've got to find something. So last subject and we're going to wrap. And then you can tell everyone where to find you. Um, aliens, another report. Alien, the, the, the government actually came out during, right when we went on quarantine. This is when they chose to do it. Aliens are real. UFOs are real. The government said that we just had a UFO sighting and it came out. The government released another tape yesterday. What's wild to me is why now would we be coming out with this after 55, 60 years of knowing? I mean, people knew. I mean, it was, it was a conspiracy. Now it's real. Now we're like, okay, we actually have a space force that was created for specifically for this. I mean, we have things happening. Do you think that maybe it's the time where we are coming into a knowledge time where it's kind of, we're, we're, we're going to become the the generation and we're, we're experiencing so much knowledge at a fast pace yeah i feel that we are we are finally being allowed to know the no what do you think is going to be the next thing i mean Neuralink, right elon musk's Neuralink, where you're putting up a chip in your brain to it's going to begin, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but Elon Musk is uh, my suit. I think he's the greatest person on the planet, no doubt, 100%, who he strongly believes aliens do not exist. Just going to throw that out there. So if Elon doesn't think they exist, I'm like, all right, I got you. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. But it's fun to think they exist, right? I think it's insane. Not to, yeah. I think it's insane not to think that there's no life forms in the entire universe. Like, bro, we're like a, a grain, a, a grain of sand. And you're saying this, this has only happened once. Like that sounds pretty crazy, but maybe I'm an optimist. Um, I forget. What was the original question? <laughs> I don't even know. What do you think is going? So we, they announced aliens or UFOs. They didn't really say aliens. They said UFOs. Um, what do you think? is the, the ultimate plan. Do you, th what do you think we're coming into? Do you think we're going to be exposed to more truth or do you think they're using it like to go look over here? Don't look at the guy behind the curtain. Oh, you know, what do you think's happening with that? 
I think that we respond very well to the don't look over here, look at the guy in the curtain. And we're very easily attracted to it because we're so bored and want to be intellectually stimulated. And it's very easy to distract us, right? It's very easy to have a conspiracy theory about everything from me sneezing all the way down to, you know, UFOs. It's really easy to do all this stuff. It's really easy to make up a fake story. Like there are literally agencies out there that their job is to create memes to stir the public to get people riled up because people just want to get riled up, you know, like deep down inside, we're just triggered so easily. So that's never going to stop. People are always going to make up stories. People are always going to try to create the game and skew it in their favor. That's a world we live in. You are a sucker if you get pulled into it. it. And the reality is, is you don't know you're a sucker until you've gotten pulled into enough of them until you start to learn, which is why you got to get in business early and you got to start early because you're going to suck and you're going to screw up and you might end up losing all your friends in the meantime. But if you have a good intentions, you're, that won't happen in my opinion. But I think with Neuralink and us being able to put like a, a, a chip in our brain and be able to operate on 20, 40, 100 X percent. Yeah, no doubt. There's going to be incredible inventions and people that are in chronic pain should use that as something that gets them up in the morning. Like every day there's new ideas and technologies that are scaling so quickly that you might have an uncurable disease, but over time, in the next five years, they might come up with that new, that new cure, which is incredible. I had a friend and I wish I could have told the disease, but she called me up recently and she had a, a, one of these diseases. It's very, con like people know about it, but it's not coming to me where she was told she would die at 18 years old. Like you just don't live past 18. So her whole life, she was just told she wasn't going to live past 18. And eventually she got to like 27, 28. And she just lived with the mentality of like, F it. Like, I'm going to die soon. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to have a few good friends and like live my life. Until just recently, like in the past year, they came out with a cure for the whole thing where you can live a completely normal life. Like what a brain mess up right there. You're told your entire life you're going to die. You live thinking you're going to die and then told you're not going to die. That's an amazing story and should give you excitement that if you have a rare disease an autoimmune disease and you're scared it is a very real possibility in the next five to ten years that they figure this whole thing out and mm -hmm. then you're going to be able to share on a podcast about how you beat this disease and you're going to create friends all over the globe like i created this video about my cybo and how i beat cybo on youtube i now have this whole cybo support group i got friends in australia new zealand we all talk and chat about it and they're like friends now it's weird like we bonded over gut issues and bad motility what a surprise so i think that over time we're going to get better it's going to get bigger technology is going to get easier there's going to be less technical coding solutions where you can be a dumb dumb and create an amazing website you can build an online business you can be a network marketing professional you can start a media company all of this is at your your, your hands if you just want to dive in but Starts with the aliens, man, you know? I know, I know, exactly. Like, cystic fibrosis was one that gave you a death sentence very young, and now people are living. I think that's it. I think that's, that's it. That's probably what it was. I had a friend also, same thing. You know, when I met him, he's, everyone's like, he could die any day, and he's living a great life with ki his kids and his wife. And That's they, amazing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful what's happened, and I do believe in technology in the future. Okay, we have had an excellent show but we do have to wrap and so i want you to tell everyone where can we find you ian your podcast your links what's new though also what's new for you and what are your projects coming up yeah first off thanks for having me on this is so much fun we got to do this more often this is gonna become your show is, this is awesome but uh uh, you can find me on Instagram at Len Jones, L-E-N Jones. That's my alter ego, Len Jones. Uh, you can find out my podcast, The Damn Good Day Show uh, on all podcasting platforms. Uh, if you're learning, you want to learn about podcasting, you check out networkpodcasting.com. And there's a lot of exciting passions. I can't tell you about the big, big thing we're working on, but I, all I can say is everything I've done in my life has accumulated and prepared me for this new task which is really, you know, getting the recognition of the skills that I've developed over a long periods of time. And like you mentioned, that's really exciting. So work on those skills today. So thank you so much for having me on. Let's freaking, let's get it, man. It's, I know today's been know? awesome. It's I've been, been drinking, awesome. I've been drinking that go, you know, I'm all, I'm so, you know. 
every morning before my workout. So I, I'm out of the pre-workout. That's why I'm not using it, but the pre-workout of their go. And I do a fasted cardio every morning. So if you want to get in some good shape, there you go. Okay. Y'all, this has been an excellent episode. Ian, thank you so much for coming on. My name is Shiloh. This is grit and grace, and it's a damn good day to have a good damn good day. Yes, it is. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to and watching Grit and Grace. This episode will be continued next week. Subscribe to us on Spotify or Apple iTunes to listen and download the Lux TV app to watch anytime, anywhere. Now, glutathione is a big word, but it's the body's own master antioxidant. Oh, it's a scavenger for free radicals, for bacteria, and what's relevant now, viruses. This is new to the marketplace. There's no other product on the market that has the ingredient NASET. And basically NASET increases the production of that glutathione that is in our body already to strengthen and, and enhance our, our immune system and keep it strong. Elevated sense of well being. Supports muscle strength and endurance. Cognitive function. Powerful liver support. This energy. Helps blood sugar regulation. Superior bioavailability of key ingredients. One of your best defenses against COVID mm -hmm. is a strong immune system. Taking GSH Plus as a daily supplement does all that. Now we have the product out on the marketplace.